Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It's Wednesday, November 24th. Boy, I hope you're not traveling today because if you are, that's just such a rookie mistake to try to like get to an airport on Wednesday before Thanksgiving. I never understood people who want to travel for Thanksgiving. Even if you miss your family, like just go a different time. It's a terrible time to travel. Oh, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to be traveling on Thanksgiving Day, but I'm going to be driving and I'll probably leave it literally like six o'clock in the morning because, you know, I'm an insane human being and I'm up early anyway. So why not? Right. Anyway, if you are traveling, bring your patience and listen. Why don't you just binge a ton of episodes? Like maybe you're listening here and you say, oh, I, I don't have enough Jill and Mark. And if that's the case, then just go and subscribe to Eye on Money. It's our other podcast that we do with CBS. And the big bonus of going to Eye on Money and listening to that program, which drops twice a week, is that Mark co-hosts with me. Huh? I love that. I think you're going to have to um, join the union and make sure that you're or update your union membership to say that you're on air now, right? Mark demands to be paid at scale. That's what he demands. I don't know if I can do that. Okay. He is good though. And he's quite excellent on the radio and he's got a great voice. You've heard him here sometimes, but he's much more of a regular presence at Eye on Money. If you have a financial question, if you have an investment question, a tax question, an education question, maybe you're considering a new job. I got a really funny question from somebody yesterday about the best way to give your notice without burning a bridge. I love that question. So um, let me know if you want to hear from our point of view what you should do. Just go to JillOnMoney.com, click the contact button. And we will be happy to assist you. If you want to come on the air live, just let us know. Mark does the rest. That's what Michael did. He is on the air from Michigan. Hello, Michael. What can we do for you? Hey, thanks so much for taking uh, the time out to have a conversation. appreciate what you and Mark uh, do every day for us um, oh, listeners. Thank you. Tell us what's going on. All right. Well, um, I've got two kids. They are a senior in high school and junior in high school. So in the next couple of years, they'll be going to college. And to date, we've been mainly focused on our retirement savings and we have not started a 529 or any other dedicated college um, savings. So as we go through this, and obviously we're going to encourage scholarships, the uh, the thought is what, what should we do um, as far as, I've had people tell me HELOCs might be a good idea. Do we let the... Kids take out student loans. It's our intention to actually pay for college for them, just kind of as a gift for them to get them started in life and have them focus more on retirement because I think there's great value in that. Well, let's let's hear a little bit about who's this we. Um, are you married? I am married. Um, I'm 51. My wife is 45, as mentioned, uh, two kids, junior and senior, so 18 and currently 16. So tell me about what you and your wife do in terms of earning a living. Yeah, so I'm full-time uh, wage earner of the, of the family. My wife does a little bit of uh, part-time work on the side, but uh, basically households is dependent upon my income. And how much do you earn? Base-wise, I'm around the 140 range. Um, annual bonus can be between twenty to 25000 That's great. And do you own a home? We do. And tell me how much the house is worth. Uh, currently about 525 and we own or owe about uh, 200 on it. What's the two, mortgage interest rate? 2.75. Oh boy. Is that a th- 30 or a 15? Uh, we set it up as a 20. A 20 year. Okay. Got it. Tell me about the emergency reserve fund. You got some cash on hand? We do. Um, checking, it's around 30000 And then I've got a brokerage account that I kind of consider in, in that same space. Mm-hmm. That's around 50. What about retirement? What do you do on that 160 or 165 of annual income? How much are you putting away for retirement? Um, I'm putting about 35000 Wow. That's great. It's a focus. <laughs> That's great. Do you have a 401k or a 403b? What do you have? Yeah, it's a 401k. We've got about a million in, in that fund. Wow. We've got a traditional rollover. It's around 800000 and then a Roth at three hundred and fifteen. Holy smokes. You're rocking it, dude. He's not rich is what Mark is saying, but that is fan. You got more than $2 million saved and, you know, 
140 grand is great. 160 grand is great, but it's not like you're making $800,000 a year. So you really have done a fantastic job. So you're putting in 19,500 into your 401k plus the $6,000 catch up, right? Yes. Okay. And then you've got the Roth contribution for your wife on her own income, right? Right. Okay. And is there any other consistent saving that you've been doing beyond that? Is there extra money? Like you have a brokerage account, but are you are you actually funding that or is that just money that has grown? Um, we are funding it. We do use that account for our vacations as well as also just kind of just in case something happens majorly. Okay. And how much goes in there? Uh, 800 a month. You're cranking, dude. You're cranking. All right. Are these kids going to um, Michigan? Like you have a great state school system, don't you? Yeah. So plan is uh, we are willing, I didn't qualify this up front, but we're willing to pay a uh, state tuition um, for the kids. Which it, would be how much? I believe it's going to be tuitions around 16000 and then room and board on top of that. So we expect it's going to be close to twenty five. So you want to fund twenty five grand a year for the eight years that will be funding college, right? Four and four. Okay. So that's good. Is it possible that you just pay for this out of cash flow and just don't save a lot while that's all happening? It's possible. Yes. Uh, well, I'm sure we can get the majority of it. And that's kind of my anxiousness, if you will, to stop saving. Is that the right thing to do now? Or do we let the, the kids do their student loans and then pay the student loans when they come due? Mm, I'm sort of looking at this and saying to myself, you are saving, you're, you're saving so much money. And it doesn't sound like you're big spenders. So you've got some choices here. I'm not a huge fan of getting a home equity line of credit for you guys. I just don't think you need to do that. Mark, do you feel okay about pulling back on the amount of savings and just using cash flow to help with college? Right. I mean, but loans are very, I mean, okay, so there's two things. Mark says, and this is right. In general, what we often will say to people is, look, keep funding your retirement. You know, you've got, let's see, this kid's 16. So we've got, so six years or so, right? And in those six years, you'll plow more money into your retirement. You'll be very close to 59 and a half by that time. Anyway, you could pull money out if you needed it and you could simply help pay down those loans. I guess that my, my concern, not concern, but my my issue is that these are going to be very, they're higher interest loans than you probably would like at this point in your life. Can I split the difference with you? Would it be possible for you guys to pull back a little bit on your retirement contributions or maybe even just say, uh, for example, like, you know, instead of 800 a month into the brokerage account, could we maybe make that more like $1,500 a month? And fund that brokerage account, keep piling money in there, and let's accumulate some more money that you would help the kids pay down those loans, some of the loans, or at least have some choices and we can see where they land. I feel like there's the theme of this week on the show has been that we want people to establish money that has already been taxed. Not that I don't love for you to save for retirement, but I do feel like if this is a really important part of your um, your value system for your family, and it's a goal that you want to accomplish to really do this for your kids, we have to actually do something today to make that happen. Mm -hmm. okay. And the d today part is, I think you should have some more money in the brokerage account. Not like you have to pay for a lot this second. You can say like, let's see, maybe, you know, he ends up at a great school, maybe he gets scholarships, maybe it's not 25, but like that you will have some opportunity and sure, apply for the loans, apply for grants, see where you go, but that having that brokerage account can help you repay or maybe help him pay that down much more quickly and give yourself a little bit of wiggle room and see where things land. Yeah, and that's where, you know, the first year seems like very easy, very manageable. It's that second, third, and fourth year where it's double. That's that's where the anxiety right. probably comes That's why, that's exactly right. And so what I think you're going to have to do is, you know, I think at this point, you have to make a decision about 
doing some savings outside of retirement to make that possible. Yes, they should apply for aid that you should, you absolutely are the family that should use the FAFSA form. And you should, and it's certainly when the two kids are in school together, you're going to get some, you're going to get something. Maybe they get more than we think. Maybe it's not going to be 25 a grand a year you need to come up with. Maybe you're going to have to come up with 15 grand a year and you're going to be like, oh my God, this is awesome. I can totally do this in my sleep. But let's yeah. see. But you need more money in cash if you're going to help them out. That's good. I like it. All right. Now, have you done some estate planning? Um, we are 99.9% there. <sighs> How do I push that over the goal line? We need to set the signatures on the paper. That's it. All right, good. Get that done. Um, so if you want to think this through, like your college payment strategy, if you want to be kind of proactive, or maybe you've done this like you've done the the Michael from Michigan move, which is fund retirement and then wait and see how it goes. And you need some help kind of figuring out what comes next. Give us a shout. Go to JillOnMoney.com. Click the contact button. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, we would very much appreciate if you left us a rating or a review in Apple. That's very helpful to us. And uh, happy hump day and uh, happy early Thanksgiving. Uh, We're going to have a special show tomorrow, so I think you're going to really like it. Try to do something nice for someone else today. Grit, growth, grace. We'll talk to you tomorrow.